Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, in this uh, talk, I would like to uh, um, describe some recent work um, that uh, where we're trying to um, understand. Uh, okay, so that one doesn't. Uh, I think the laser doesn't work, maybe, but maybe I can use this. Okay. Uh, the title of my talk is Deconstructing Holographic Liquids, and uh, I hope to um, tell you in broad detail uh, what does it mean. Uh, um, a lot of the, um, uh, the, the slide here has uh, details that are um, not conceptually uh, very important. If you have any um, question during the talk, please ask me so that I can um, I, I can uh, I can slow down. Okay, so the reference uh, the paper that I will be talking about here is the one uh, that uh, uh, Dominic Nickel and I uh, wrote last year, and there are a series of related works. Uh, uh, under the name of holographic renormalization group, uh, and some of the, um, the, the, the the papers in this series is listed here. I think by now there must be more than three papers. Our uh, um, our point of view uh, is slightly different, as uh, you will see in this talk. Okay, so let's uh, first start with the motivation. What is the goal that we want to achieve here? Uh, holography by now is one of the methods that is used to study uh, strongly coupled uh, quantum field theories. In particular, quantum field theories at finite temperatures and or finite chemical potential. So quantum field theory at finite temperature and chemical potential, I will call uh, liquid. So holography are now used to study strongly coupled liquids. Uh, for example, the N equal 4 super young mills plasma, although it is not the realistic uh, uh, quantum chromodynamics, is uh, sometimes used as a very rough model, a spherical cow model of uh, the quark gluon plasma that is created at Rick. And that is because um, many calculations can be done much more easily in the strong coupling limit of n equal 4 super young mills plasma compared to the uh, QCD at strong coupling. But more recently, there are a, a very active um, uh, direction of research where people try to uh, model uh, non-fermi liquid behavior uh, of uh, condensed matter systems by um, starting with um, some gravity solution namely a reisner nordstrom black hole, and then put in fermions. Uh, the hope here is to construct a model that can be, uh, in some sense, similar to the uh, uh, behavior of, say, high TC superconductivity. Okay, so uh, uh, the standard way to do uh, the uh, modeling is to first identified our liquid or what we want um, uh, the system uh, to look like to a solution of a higher dimensional theory with the ADS boundary. So for example, in the case of the N equal uh, 4 super young mills plasma, this solution would be uh, just a solution of five dimensional Einstein equation with uh, gravitational constant. Uh, and then we follow the standard technique of uh, gauge gravity duality and compute the correlation function uh, of field theories. 
there is a very well defined set of rules to tell us if you want to compute, for example, the current current correlation function in quantum field theory, we have to solve the equation of motion for a gauge field in five dimensional theory, and uh, etc. For ex uh, if we can want to compute correlation function of the stress tensor, we would have to solve the equation for the gravitons in the background field. And uh, um, in many cases, in some cases, for example, in this case, we know the microscopic theory is the n-equal force of young Mills plasma, but uh, in a, a, a large number of, uh, of cases, for example, in the case where people try to model the um, non-fermi liquid behavior, we don't know exactly what is the bulk theory. Uh, we hope that it exists. Uh, if it exists, then it is expected to be some large N uh, gauge theory. The large N, uh, uh, and the fact that it is large N uh, doesn't seem to be a limiting uh, uh, feature when we use gauge gravity duality to model the quark gluon plasma. Uh, for the condensed matter system, we don't know whether it's, um, what is the, whether it's a severe restriction or it is um, something that can be overcome. Okay, now I want to, in this talk, I want to um, um, do, to, to, uh, to, 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 to um, uh, make a propaganda for a different way to think about how we have to use a holography to model um, strongly coupled liquids. Frequently, we are not interested in the details of the microscopic theory at all. Uh, in condensed matter uh, physics, uh, most of the time we are uh, mostly interested in the long distance, long time behavior of correlation function, or low momentum, low frequency uh, uh, behavior of the correlation functions. Uh, for example, uh, if you follow, if you, you uh, look at uh, what people do in the ADS-CMT program. Uh, uh, what people do is to first write down the full metric and then use the metric to compute correlation function. But then, at the end, all that is extracted is the long distance behavior of the correlation function. So that goes uh, very well with the goal of ADS-CFT. One goal of ADS-CFT correspondence uh, or gauge gravity duality is to use it to try to de to 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 to, um, to see whether there are possible new quantum critical behaviors, new type of low energy effective theories that can be uh, that that can emerge uh, that we haven't thought about before. Now uh, uh, the standard ads CFT way to do uh, the modeling uh, contains more information than just the long distance behavior of the correlation function. And one can ask the question, do we really need the full, uh, full uh, machinery of holography uh, to describe the long distance dynamic of the holographic liquid? And in this talk, I would like to um, uh, argue that the answer to this question is, is no. Um, uh, we don't need the full machinery of holography in order to uh, describe the low energy, uh, long distance behavior of holographic liquid. Any question? Okay, so the previous of, re of the result uh, that I will be uh, presenting is the following. Uh, in, I, would I, I will argue that in all instances of holographic liquids that has been proposed, that are the um, model in higher dimension, that are uh, supposed to describe a system with finite temperature or finite chemical potential, we can think about the low energy dynamics as uh, consisting of several uh, uh, components. One is a set of uh, Goldstone bosons that are described by a Lagrangian, by just an effective Lagrangian, like an effective Lagrangian of a quantum field theory. These Goldstone bosons are coupled to an uh, infrared sector, and that infrared sector may or may not uh, need to be described holographically. 
So the, the holographic the holographic description might be needed to describe this sector, but not the sector of the Goldstone boson. And these two sectors are coupled by some emergent gauge fields that I will argue are very similar to the uh, uh, gauge fields that are argued to emerge in condensed matter context. So this uh, picture is very similar to the so-called holo semi-holographic uh, theories uh, proposed by Pol uh, Faulkner and Pulchinski. And the uh, difference here is that we have uh, the, uh, uh, an important role in our construction is played by the emergent gauge field that I will spe specialize later. OK. So let's us recall one feature of the ADS-CFT dictionary, the Dictionary of Holography. Um, the theory, uh, the dual holographic theory, has one extra dimension. Uh, that is the radial direction. The radial direction uh, roughly corresponds to the energy scale. Uh, the boundary of ADS space uh, correspond to high energies in quantum field theories, and the region of the space near the horizon correspond to the low energy regime of ADS space, uh, the, of quantum field theory. So naively speaking, if we, uh, uh, um, if we are interested in the low energy, long distance behavior of the correlation functions, all we need to know is the behavior of the metric near the horizon, according to this ADS-CFT uh, dictionary. And explicit calculation in many cases show that the uh, near horizon uh, physics determine the singular uh, behavior of the inverse uh, correlation function. So in uh, some sense, this expectation from the ADS-CFT uh, correspondence borns out uh, in the calculation, but not completely. Uh, uh, if we look at how the calculations are done in practice, uh, the calculation of correlation function always involves the whole metric from the boundary to the horizon, but uh, never just the infrared part alone. And that one part of this um, comes just from the way that ADS-CFT correspondence is formulated in order to compute correlation function we have to impose boundary condition on the ultraviolet boundary, uh, but not on in the infrared. So just the formulations of the correspondent all, all already imposed upon us how we have to do the calculation, that we have to, uh, to do the calculation in the whole uh, space-time. Uh, but there is another uh, uh, um, physical point I want to stress, is that the infrared metric cannot contain the complete in, uh, infrared information about the infrared um, behavior uh, of correlation functions. And one can demonstrate that um, uh, in one uh, example, in many examples. And one of the example is uh, the extremal reisner nordstrom uh, case. Uh, in the uh, extremal reisner nordstrom uh, black hole, we know that the infrared metric is an ADS-2 metric where the space uh, coordinate completely decouple. Okay, so uh, the metric looks like an uh, infinite number of ADS2 at each point in space. However, uh, the holographic liquids that correspond to the Reisner Nordstrom black hole is a compressible medium. If you look at the equation of state of that liquid, it has a non trivial um, uh, dependence. The pressure depends non trivially on the chemical potential. So it should support a gapless uh, mode. For example, it could be sound wave mode or a diffusive mode, some gapless mode uh, uh, that transport charge. Okay? Charge is conserved, uh, so, uh, so, and the medium is compressible. So if, if we uh, hit the, uh, the system, there's some, some kind of wave should propagate out. The, looking at the ADS2 part of the metric, we cannot see that thing happen because the metric decouple into the products of many ADS2 at each given point. There is no, no connection between different points in the metric. So the infrared part of the metric cannot be the whole story. Uh, if we want to understand the infrared behavior of a holographic liquid, we need to look more um, uh, outside, look to something 
uh, in addition to the metric near the horizon. Now let us uh, dis dis uh, discuss one example where we know uh, exactly what kind of infrared behavior uh, we should expect. And that example is charge diffusion. Uh, if we have a finite temperature medium with a conserved charge, then the behavior of charge density is described by a diffusion equation. So, uh, and we know how to model such a system using holography. Uh, consider just a Maxwell a gauge field, U1 gauge field, uh, living on an ADS uh, black hole background. And that is the model that uh, will correspond to, uh, to uh, conserve charge in a finite uh, temperature medium which diffuse. Okay, so the metric is written here, uh, just uh, some black hole metric, where this function f is zero at the horizon and is one at the boundary. Uh, okay, so um, the previous approaches uh, uh, are either directly compute the correlation function from ads CFT prescription, uh, that in the, this approach we have to use the whole metric and that from that, we can extract two-point correlation function that has a diffusion pole. So we uh, we see diffusion, or we can follow the uh, method of fluid gravity correspondence and derive the uh, diffusion equation out of the Maxwell equation, and that can be done very easily. Um, in, uh, in both cases, we have to think about the solution uh, about solving the equation. Uh, the Maxwell equation in the whole bulk, not just near the bound, near the, uh, the the horizon. Okay, so now I would like to uh, um, uh, understand the low energy dynamics of the system by separating out the infrared behavior, the by by separating out the mode that clearly will be in the uh, low energy effective theory and then inter trying to integrate out all the modes that naively would belong to the UV sector. According to ads -CFT correspondence, uh, all the modes that live near the horizons are low energy, so I put some infrared, some, some cutoff, uh, R lambda, uh, that would separate the, uh, that would be the, uh, the, 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 the energy um, the uh, energy scale uh, below which the infrared uh, uh, effective theory lives, and then I will try to integrate out the modes that live here. Uh, that can be done in principle in, uh, in the bulk theory. Uh, uh, basically, we need to decompose the five-dimensional uh, uh, action into two parts. One part that is integral from R0 to infinity, uh, of the Maxwell action is now decomposed into integral from R0 to R lambda and then from R lambda to infinity. And now we interpret uh, each of this uh, bulk theory as two different theories. That, um, that, that, uh, and then we try to, to eliminate the degrees of freedom in this ultraviolet theory. Is any, any question so far? Okay. Okay. So, but before doing that, let us think about the uh, main features of the UV and the IR theories. Uh, the infrared theories uh, lives from R naught to R lambda. So R lambda basically serves as the boundary of the space for the of the uh, of the infrared theory in the whole, in its own holographic description. Okay, so the infrared theory, both theories are now defined holographically uh, as a five-dimensional theory. The infrared theory has one boundary at R lambda. So one can think about that as a theory that couple to a gauge field, A mu. Okay, where A mu here is just the value of the gauge field, the five-dimensional gauge field at the uh, radial slice uh, R lambda. So the infrared theory is coupled to a gauge field. Uh, the ultraviolet theory that lives from here to here, uh, first of all, it couples to the original uh, gauge field A mu 
of that couple to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the U1, the original U1 charge. Uh, the ADS-CFT correspondence tells us that the value of the gauge field at the uh, ADS boundary is the gauge, the, the, the gauge field that coupled to the charge in the field theory. On the other hand, this UV theory also has, uh, has another boundary here. So it couples not only to the gauge field A mu, but uh, also to the uh, gauge field little a mu. So in other words, the gross feature of our construction will be the following, that the, we have an action that is decomposed into uh, the sum of two actions. One action is the action of the infrared degrees of freedom that couple to the little a uh, gauge field, and the ultraviolet uh, degrees of freedom that couple to both the, uh, the, 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 probe, the, the, the gauge field, the original U1 gauge field a mu, and this uh, new gauge field little a mu. This little field, this, this, this field little a mu is just a field that we put in basically by hand, by construction. We cut the, we, we put a, a artificial division line between the ultraviolet and the infrared, so we got, and as a result, we get a, 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 an extra uh, gauge field little a mu. Now, the equation of motion uh, of the gauge field can be thought of as minima the, uh, the, the extremization of the action. So A mu should be minimized uh, upon. That means that A mu is a dynamical field, and in the classical uh, approximation, we have to minimize the, this uh, S with respect to A mu. In the path integral formulation, we have to integrate over the little a. So this little a is a dynamical field. It's so the the derivative the derivative of the uh, gauge field has to be continuous across this boundary, uh, and the derivative of S I R with respect to a mu delta S over delta a mu for this part has to cancel out delta S over delta a mu for this part, and that gives rise to the uh, matching of the derivatives. Right now, I did not uh, integrate anything out. I just did a uh, um, very formal division of the uh, action into two parts. Can I, so, uh, this mu at the boundaries, uh, where from does it, this mu, small mu, you are uh, uh -huh. taking it by hand, but this mu, how do you? The, the large AMU, the large AMU is just the background gauge field uh, that the, is coupled to the uh, conserved E1 uh, current of the original conformal field theory. Okay. So if you want, you can put that AMU to zero. That would correspond to a conformal field theory living without any background gauge field. In order to compute current-current correlation function, uh, in the original theory, you have to differentiate the action with respect to this big A mu. Uh, so By construction. So here, I define both the IR theory and UV theory uh, formally as some theory that is described holographically by this part of the action and this part of the action. Okay? So by construction, the, um, the, 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 I can solve in order to compete. The, the IR theory cannot know about the, uh, the directly about the value of a mu here. It knows about the a mu here only through the degrees of freedom that live here that transmit the information about the, uh, the big A to, to that boundary. So, so the, uh, at this level, the formal statement is that you just split that action exponent into two pieces. Into two pieces. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. I have not integrated anything. I have not integrated out anything. OK, so let's now uh, look at the ultraviolet theory. The ultraviolet theory uh, should be a confining theory. OK, 
Okay? And that is because we have imposed an artificial infrared wall at R equal R lambda. It is like um, the way people model confinement. Uh, they take the ADS space and then put an infrared, uh, cut off the space at some infrared uh, scale and declare that the scale, that scale is lambda QCD. So the spectrum of ultraviolet theory uh, is discrete. Uh, if we um, uh, decompose the uh, gauge field into normal mode, the, that, uh, the, um, the cavity mode between these two uh, boundaries, then we would see the uh, discrete spectrum of hadrons. I'm sorry, this, um, this statement of just having an IR wall at R equals R lambda, um, in a more pure definition of confinement, how does this um, correspond to a mass gap theory? Like, I, I, see what you, I see your argument about a lambda QCD, so some sort of one loop infinite running of the coupling. No, this one is um, simpler than that. Uh, if we solve the um, uh, Maxwell equation between two plates, just the problem of, 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 of what is that, a weight guide, then there is a mode that uh, there is a discrete number of modes in the cavities. So the same thing here happened uh, in this example. We have a mo modes that propagate between two boundaries. And we decompose this into um, uh, into discrete set of modes. Uh, here, I'm making an analogy to the way that people trying people try to use holography to model QCD. You don't have to think about QCD uh, for this uh, problem. You have to. Um, all we need is a discrete no, discrete spectrum of modes. Okay. This I fixed little a mu. A mu is really dynamic. So the, uh, I'm allowed to do that at fix a mu and a mu. Okay. So I have a set of hadrons that couples to the external gauge field. I can think about the UV theory as a theory of uh, hadrons, but the hadrons couple to two external gauge field, a mu and a mu. That I, I certainly can do that. Okay, so now the next thing uh, I would like to say is that the, lo um, the lowest hadron is actually a massless uh, mode, a massless mode like a pion in QCD. Uh, so one what was the boundary condition out there? The boundary condition here is that the gauge field is equal to a mu on this side, capital A, and equal to lower ca case a mu on this side. Okay, so one can, for simplicity, put that to zero. So in the case when this little a mu is zero, you just have uh, uh, something that goes. Uh, okay, so the analogy one can draw here is with the Sakai Sugimoto model uh, of holographic QCD. Uh, there, you also can think about the, uh, um, uh, the, the mesons as living on the uh, D8, D8 bar brains that have two boundaries. And uh, there is a Dirichlet boundary condition on the field on the, on the two boundaries. And the, the, in, the, in that model, there is a massless pion that is uh, the Wilson line of the gauge field. So if, if you, uh, uh, in our case, if we take the integral of the radial direction of a, a r from the uh, our from the uh, real boundary of ADS space to the uh, our uh, artificial uh, boundary, uh, then we will get some uh, quantity that is uh, invariant under gauge transformation that do not change the boundary conditions at the two boundaries. So this is the gauge invariant uh, quantities, and one can um, uh, convince ourselves that this is the massless pions, like in the Sakai Sugimoto model. Okay, so here, uh, I think I make a miss, I misspell this word. We throw away all massive hadrons. So instead of, uh, of honestly integrating out 
the massive particles, as I showed here, I just I will just throw them away. Okay. Yeah. In, in the. So this is gauge invariant if the gauge transformation in the bulk take the gauge transformation parameter at R lambda and infinity take the same value, right? Uh, uh, have the <coughs> if the gauge transformation do not, in particular, if the gauge transformation do not change the boundary condition, <coughs> then, then this is the gauge invariant uh, field. That should uh, that should exist, and that is massless. And that is the way that the reason why uh, the lowest mode in the Sakai Sugimoto model is the massless pion. In our case, there must be a mode like that. It's a pion mode. So we we throw away all the massive hadrons. Oh, um, in other words, I'm going to uh, 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 so to I think to the um, to the accuracy that we are working here, uh, that is the uh, the the, um, the one can justify uh, that. Okay, so now we have just a theory of a pion uh, instead of a full tower of mode in the UV. We just keep one single mode, the pion. So, and no matter where lambda is, the minimum mass that you're throwing away is lambda naught. Since lambda is a great, it's, it's R naught. No, R lambda. The minimum mass is zero. I know, but R yeah. lambda can be made as small as R naught. As small. And then the Even spacing, there. the spacing between the, so there is some, there is a tower. Okay, so uh, I fix R lambda. And then I'm, I'm, I have the theory of a tower coupled to some infra infrared theory. Now, uh, I want to consider the dynamics of this model at the scale that is much smaller than the spacing between energy levels of the tower. Right. So in, in this case, way... In, yeah. in the case of just a simple, simple black hole, you mm -hmm. could take R lambda all the way to R0 and mm -hmm. still get a finite mass gap where, where the mass no. gap was R0. In, in the case of which, which black hole has this property? The Schwarzschild black hole. No. In the case, uh, I think no. That's not true? I think in the, in the math, in the, it's probably not, but I have to think about that. I, I think it's not. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so how does the pion transform under uh, the two U1 gauge fields? The, you, the, the, the ultraviolet theory is coupled to two gauge fields, the uh, original U1 gauge field and our artificial uh, gauge field, little a mu. The pions transform uh, bifundamentally under this U1 cross U1. Uh, say, if we uh, do a gauge transform, a mu go to a mu plus d mu alpha, uh, big a mu go to a mu plus d mu beta, uh, then uh, just by looking at the transformation properties of the uh, Wilson line, uh, we can see it right away that phi goes to phi minus alpha plus beta. So if you think about e to the i phi, it is multiplied on the left by, by e to the i alpha and on the right by e to the minus uh, beta. So in, in other words, this pion is a field that breaks the U1 gauge, U1 <coughs> times U1 uh, symmetry down to a single U1. Okay, so these two U1s have different origins. One is the uh, global U1 of the original field theory, and the U1 that uh, the, the, the second U1 is the artificial U1 that we introduce. Uh, and the pion breaks this product U1 times U1 going to a, a single U1. And uh, uh, from the fact that the pion is massless, we can write down the quadratic action for the uh, quadratic Lagrangian uh, for the pion. It should have uh, d naught um, phi and d i phi square terms because um, the black hole breaks Lorentz invariance. In principle, uh, the two coefficients in front of these two terms can be different. The decay constant of the pion can be different in the time light direction and in the space-like direction, and that the, um, the coupling of the pion to the external gauge field is completely fixed by the symmetry. So to that Lagrangian, we have to add an infrared action, and the infrared action depends only on the 
field A mu. The immersion gauge field A mu. Okay. Little A. So now with the infrared action, um, I'm, we are not going to uh, specify uh, how it looks like. All I would need to know is how the infrared degrees of freedom responds. Resp uh, what is the, respon the response of the infrared degrees of freedom on the uh, external gauge field? And here uh, I will uh, use the uh, a statement from the membrane paradigm of black hole physics. That is, the black hole horizon has a finite conductivity. So whenever I have to compute the deri the the, the, the uh, the derivatives of the infrared action with respect to uh, spatial component of the gauge field, uh, or in other words, the current uh, associated with that little AI, I can replace that by the conductivity times the electric field. So the membrane paradigm tells us that there is a finite conductivity of the black hole horizon, but that conductivity is the conductivity with respect to the a uh, few little a that the field that the infrared, infrared degrees of freedom leaves. Okay, so I, the membrane paradigms completely fix the uh, uh, spatial part of the current, the uh, temporal part of the current is then determined completely by gauge invariance. Sorry, uh, is this the same conductivity of the original boundary It is the, right now, it is the conductivity of the horizon which does not have to be the same, uh, uh, a priori, it does not have to be the same as the conductivity of the uh, boundary theory. In this particular case, they are the same, but in general, it is not guaranteed that they would be the same. Can I ask a slightly more general question? Mm -hmm. I should have asked earlier. This effective field theory you have constructed, uh, it is valid for what physics for low energy physics, energy physics that is much lower than the distance between the um, uh, the uh, the, um, <coughs> the uh, pions and the next uh, hadrons. But uh, maybe this is what has been asked before also. Uh, that uh, you've artificially constructed a barrier at lambda, right? Mm -hmm. So from the point of view of the boundary theory. Mm -hmm. uh, the effective field theory you have constructed is valid below what energy scale? Uh, the energy scale of the things that I have thrown away. The energy scale of the of these hadrons. So there is there is only one massless hadron that is a pion, and I have thrown away everything above the pion. So above that energy scale, the theory is no longer valid. And let's say I took a sorry, just, uh, if I took a mm -hmm. black hole uncharged. Everything simple at temperature mm -hmm. T. Mm -hmm. uh, what and what would the mass of these hadrons be? The worry I have is mm -hmm. does it depend mm -hmm. on lambda in some way? It seems to depend on lambda. It's it it's to to uh, uh, at the order that I'm working right now. It does not seem to depend on lambda, but in fact it should have a dependence on lambda. Uh, um, suppose I want to compute correlation function at some energy scale that is much smaller than T. So some scale omega, I would have to. Yeah, I would have to choose a lambda, a R lambda uh, uh, in an, as an, uh, at some intermediate scale between temperature and the and the scale I want for which I want to compute my correlation function. Mm -hmm. So having this lambda at the intermediate scale would guarantee that the spacing between the uh, energy level in the tower is much bigger than the energy scale I'm. Uh, I want to compute. So I have to use the fact that there is a separation of scale between temperature and... and so in the causing all the more problem, we put a boundary conditions right on the horizon, and mm -hmm. we still get a finite mass scale. That one, I think, is a different, uh, um, different calculation, I think. But uh, I'd be surprised if you didn't get a finite mass scale to put any boundary conditions on the horizon. Since one boundary condition gives you a finite mass scale at the horizon. In every point. Yeah. I wish I wish to uh, talk more about that. Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, uh, so to that action, uh, we add uh, another infrared action that uh, has the properties that the uh, uh, current uh, uh, associated with the derivative of that action with respect to the gauge field is equal to the electric field. So I don't need to know anything else about the infrared theory except that it satis satisfies the equation of the uh, membrane paradigm. Okay, so now uh, let, let us uh, come to the complete effective theory description of the Maxwell uh, field theory in five dimension. So instead of thinking about the five dimensional theory, now we have uh, effective field theory uh, given by this action, the Goldstone boson part of the action and the infrared part of the action. So here I turn off the external gauge field A mu, but I have to keep the little a because little a is the is my um, dynamical field. Uh, I have to integrate over this a mu. So one can think about this action as a uh, action of a superconductor, uh, where phi here is the superconducting uh, phase. A superconductor coupled through a U1 gauge field to a conductor. Basically, that is the physics here. The equation of motion of this model would be the uh, ds over d phi is equal to zero. Uh, ds e equal e a i is equal to zero. There is one more equation, ds over d a naught is equal to zero, but it follows from these two uh, equations. Okay? And one can check this, uh, that these uh, two equations uh, Im implies that the Goldstone boson becomes, instead of a propagating mode, it becomes a diffusive mode. So I'm just show you very quickly how this uh, algebra is done. If we uh, we have to differentiate the action with respect to little a i and equate that to zero, and for that we use the uh, explicit uh, expression for the pion uh, pion uh, action and the membrane paradigm that <coughs> that give us the value for the derivative of s i r with respect to a i in terms of the conductivity. And then there is an equation motion for the pion field, and diagonalizing this set of two equations, we find that the, uh, this uh, equation can be written down as the diffusion equation for, uh, for a charge. That is just the U1 charge of this theory. So we can derive the diffusion from uh, the low energy effective theory. So instead of jumping right away from the holographic theory to the diffusion equations, uh, as we would do in the uh, uh, fluid gravity correspondence approach. Here we have an intermediate step, and the intermediate step is the, uh, is the theory involving a Goldstone boson and uh, a, a coupled uh, to an infrared sector. Okay, so we have not uh, derived constructively uh, the Goldstone boson action but we can determine its parameter by, uh, by, uh, by some matching calculation. And the matching calculation will tell us what is the value of F0 and Fi, the, uh, the coupling constants of the pion. And I, I will not go through the calculation right now, but uh, this co coupling constant depends just on the metric and then on the, uh, on the uh, young mills uh, coupling. Here, the sigma that you write, uh, that you write is uh, due to the movement paradigm, that sigma that you get, mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, even in the case of zero charge, etc., movement paradigm results in the boundary result. Uh, those are not similar. They differ by scale factor. So that sigma is just a... There is a scale factor here that, uh, that is basically um, due to the fact that I use the same... I use, uh, I use the, when I translate between the metric near the horizon to the metric at the boundary, there is a rather, there is a trivial scale factor. So in the way that I'm writing here, uh, this scale factor was taken out from the sigma, and so the sigma is the same as the sigma on the boundary. But if you rewrite the infrared action as integral over the 
the metric on the time slice, there is the, that, that scale factor. Okay, so what we have learned is the following, is that the low energy dynamics of our model is Goldstone boson coupled to a dissipative horizon. So there is a horizon degrees of freedom that is dissipative that give rise to all the dissipation that we encounter in the problem. But the Goldstone boson is somewhat uh, separated from that uh, dissipative sector. Uh, there is an in indirect uh, connection between the Goldstone boson and the horizon. Th that is through an, a, a gauge field, a mu, a little a mu. Okay, so the, uh, the Goldstone boson at the beginning was a propagating mode and through this coupling to the horizon becomes a diffusion, diffusive mode. The diffusive mode of hydrodynamics is a uh, Goldstone boson, was the Goldstone boson. So I would like to draw uh, an analogy with the emergent gauge fields that sometimes appear in condensed matter construction. For example, in the slave boson formalism, when we, uh, when we uh, just by hand uh, speed off uh, a field, uh, 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 um, a fermion field into the product of two fields, when we do this uh, split, uh, there is an emergent U1 redundancy uh, which becomes a gauge uh, symmetry. So it, in a very similar way here, we, uh, the, the split that we did was a split in a, in, in a five-dimensional space. And the gauge field uh, that appears is the gauge field that uh, lives on, the, uh, on a certain uh, radial slice. So there is a very interesting analogy with uh, immersion gauge fields in condensed matter physics. OK, so uh, all that has been done with the uh, uh, um, simple example of a gauge field uh, in the bulk. Now, uh, I would like to uh, consider a somewhat uh, more uh, complicated uh, case that is gravitational perturbations. Uh, we know that gravitational perturbation of a black brain at the low, uh, in the long uh, wavelength limit give rise to hydrodynamics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, normally it's hard to get dissipation out of an action. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got dissipation by using this membrane paradigm equation. Right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. does dissipation exactly come in? And, uh, could you write down some I sample action that would really give you you have to write it down in a, a double a contour formalism. You cannot write down the, the that's, you cannot write the equal, equal sign here. That's why I put the uh, the, the, the the arrow here. Uh, you can write down a double uh, contour uh, action that would uh, have this effect. <coughs> so close time path uh, contour. Okay, so. Uh, hydrodynamics. So, if the, what, what we said is correct, then it should be possible to uh, formulate hydrodynamics as a theory of Goldstone boson coupled to uh, dissipative uh, sectors. And the Goldstone boson of hydrodynamics uh, should appear as the uh, as a Goldstone boson of a breakdown of diffeomorphism invariant times a diffeomorphism invariant going down to a diagonal uh, diffeomorphism invariant. It's like U1 cross U1 is broken down to U1. So we have to have a Goldstone boson that is bifundamental with respect to gravity. And instead of constructing this theory from gravity, we are here rely mostly on guesswork and um, try to write down, uh, reformulate hydrodynamics uh, as the theory of Goldstone bosons. And um, and and and, and uh, I, I would propose that this, this this formulation of hydrodynamics will be the one that naturally appears in holography. Yeah, so this is only in the boundary directions. There are two boundaries now. Yeah. So yeah. not the bound, not the bound but uh, the diffeomorphism in the boundary. Yeah. yeah. But it should appear as the result of the diffeomorphism of the five-dimensional theory. But we. We haven't constructed yet. Okay, so the gravitational Goldstone boson was constructed, uh, uh, was considered before uh, uh, um, by Arkani, Ahmed, Georgia, and Schwartz. Uh, it is a map between two systems. We can think about that as a map between two systems of coordinates. So we have one system of coordinates x mu and another is called 
uh, capital XM, then we can, uh, this map can be thought about as a set of scalar fields living in coordinate X mu or another set of scalar fields that live in coordinate capital XM. So in this way, uh, uh, we can formulate, one theory can be formulated in two different ways, as a theory in, in X mu or in theory in XM. And we have to, when we write down the action, we have to make sure that the action is uh, diffeomorphism invariant with respect to both. Okay. Oh, uh, so in our case, the specific uh, things for our case is that at the end we want to make this coordinate XM uh, null because we want this uh, infrared uh, boundary to be very close to the horizon. Okay. So, so in uh, if we want to do this procedure uh, honestly we have to keep the this, this, this boundary at some distance to the horizon but for simplicity I will assume that this XM is so close to the horizon that we can think about the metric on XM as a null metric a null metric uh, can be parameterized by a, by a, uh, by, uh, by, by a degenerate uh, for degenerate uh, uh, four by four um, matrix, or we can think about that as uh, uh, three by three matrix uh, 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 plus uh, a null vector. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, the uh, infrared matrix. Uh, has a structure that um, uh, I don't know how to call it. I, uh, we we call it a Galilei structure. It's certainly not con has not been considered by Galilei, uh, uh, but it has a, this this feature of the non-relativistic theory that very uh, that, that that very looks very non-relativistic. The speed of light at the horizon uh, goes to zero. Okay. So the theory should be uh, invariant with respect to two types of diffeomorphism. One is changing the spatial coordinate, is moving the spatial coordinate, and another uh, is moving the time coordinate. And we can work out explicitly how the uh, three by three matrix and this uh, null vector uh, um, uh, change. Uh, there must be some uh, more, um, uh, a better way to uh, to impose diffeomorphism. What we did is just we just try to work out the uh, um, by hands how the, the the transformation properties of the of the metric and of the action that we were going to write down. Okay, so the hydrodynamic action uh, consists of three parts. One we call that S naught. That is the analog of the uh, D, D zero phi minus a naught square part of the uh, of the uh, action for the pions. Another part of the action is the shear part that contains a i, and through that a i is coupled to the horizon. Okay? The horizon has the um, uh, uh, non-trivial uh, uh, conductivity. Okay, so for the s zero, uh, the s zero actually is will be the action that give rise to ideal hydrodynamics and that action was proposed uh, years ago a uh, few years ago by Dubovsky, Grigor, uh, Nikolis Ratazzi and um, I will not actually go into much details about this action I just uh, want to say that it is an action of a set of four Goldstone bosons one can think about this XM as Goldstone bosons it's some Nonlinear action of the Goldstone bosons that depends only on combinations that are invariant with respect to the diffeomorphism. This determinant here uh, makes sure that this uh, this 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 action uh, is invariant under the, uh, the, the 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 diffeomorphism. Okay, so uh, the ideal hydrodynamics can be thought about can be thought of. As uh, as a theory of this scalar field XM. So physically, what is this XM? This, uh, if you think about the fluid, we can draw a coordinate system in the fluid, and then as the fluid moves, 
it defines uh, a, 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 a moving, a co-moving coordinate system. This XM is nothing but the coordinates of the system of coordinates co-moving with the fluid. This is one way to think about the physical uh, 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 XM. Basically, it corresponds to choo choosing a gauge in the formulation of the previous case where the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the metric is, has the form of a diagonal 0, 1, 1, 1. But one can also choose a, a unitary gauge where this XM is equal to the coordinates of the space. And, ha and then uh, the, uh, the, 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 the degrees of freedom is the, in the metric, G mu nu. It has the, one can decompose it into the, uh, the factor here that is the entropy density and the fluid velocity. One can see right uh, from this formulation that, that it uh, gives rise to the, the, the theory of Goldstone boson has uh, alternative uh, description uh, in a different gauge as a theory of a flow of a fluid. And then we have the shear part uh, that I will, uh, it's uh, rather um, uh, technical here. Uh, the shear part of the action uh, couple the shear perturbation of the metric with the uh, with the, uh, with the, um, uh, the couple the Goldstone boson with the shear perturbation of the uh, uh, near horizon metric. Does the background metric on which the is formulated, does that appear somewhere in the previous action? It, it could be just replaced eta by, by g? Okay, so uh, what is eta? Uh, you have this eta in it. Eta MN is That's this zero. This is the Minkowski metric. Yeah. I suppose you had a fluid propagating not in Minkowski space but some general space. Could I just replace that by? by metric no. That? The if a fluid propagate in a general space, you are supposed to 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 replace that G mu nu by the metric of the general space. Okay. So the internal you should not touch the internal um, the, this this infrared uh, metric. Which is the, some internal degrees of freedom of the uh, that that the, the emergent gravity uh, degrees of freedom that 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 should does not have anything to do with the external metric. And if if I took this action and differentiate it with respect to G mu nu, with would I get the perfect fluid stretch tensor? With respect to G mu nu, that that one you yes. get the perfect fluid uh, stress tensor. You do? Yeah. Uh, uh, you do, and that put a constraint on the function here. This function has to be the energy as a function of entropy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then, um, then there is um, the, 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 the the this part, the shear part, is the part that couple. Uh, the um, Goldstone motion to uh, shear perturbation of Jimmy Unu that at the end will transmit the, uh, uh, the shear viscosity of the horizon to the shear viscosity at the boundary. Okay, so I will not uh, uh, write it. Uh, I will just uh, show you the result. Uh, uh, the, um, in order for the transmission to, to occur the way we, we want it to be, uh, the shear uh, part of the uh, uh, the, 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 the IR, uh, the, uh, the, uh, we, we can write down, we can, we can show that a general, the most general form of the shear, uh, part of the, uh, action, uh, will, uh, do the job, uh, of transmitting the, 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 hor the horizon, um, uh, viscosity to the, uh, the boundary viscosity. Okay. And then the IR uh, part of the action, again, is dictated by the membrane paradigm. <coughs> okay, so um, the only information that we need from the IR part is that it gives rise to a horizon stress tensor. The horizon stress tensor is the derivative of the action with respect to the metric near the horizon, not the metric at the boundary, and that is... Uh, given by a, by a shear tensor of the metric. Okay, combining all everything, we can then uh, 
go to a unitary gauge and derive the uh, usual equation of fluid dynamics. We can uh, convince ourselves that this construction gives rise to the same uh, set of hydrodynamic equation as the one that is written in textbook. So there is one, at least here we have shown that there is one way uh, to reformulate hydrodynamics in terms of the, as a theory of a, gold, of a Goldstone boson. Okay. It is not probably not the most uh, simple uh, way to do hydrodynamics, but it seems to be the bridge between holography and hydrodynamics. So, How would you obtain the hierarchical directions? In principle? So in principle, I have uh, to uh, derive this action. Here, I have not tried to derive the action. I was trying to construct a theory that I said, uh, uh, we think it would be uh, the leading order uh, effective action in the infrared of the, um, of the, uh, of the uh, holographic theories. Right now, we don't know how to constructively derive that. If we knew, then in principle we can go order and order and compute and, and derive the corrections. Okay, so well, what we have found is that there exists a, a different formulation of uh, relativistic fluid dynamics, and that formulation was uh, informed by holography uh, because this is something we expect to arise uh, from, uh, from holography. And this uh, uh, formulation... Uh, Goldstone, we have a Goldstone boson uh, that is coupled to the boundary matrix in some IR emergent uh, metric and uh, through this emergent metric coupled to the horizon degrees of freedom. So it can be uh, thought about as a result of deconstructing the uh, ADS black brain in order to keep the information about hydrodynamics. All we need to do is to replace uh, a uh, big chunk of the metric by a uh, set of Goldstone boson. Okay, so let me uh, go to um, uh, conclusion and outlook. Uh, there are many uh, holographic constructions now with non-trivial infrared behaviors. For example, one can construct a holographic model with, uh, uh, that seems to describe zero temperature superfluid we can construct examples of uh, Berezinski, Kostelitz, uh, Taulis uh, type of phase transitions. Uh, uh, we can construct a model uh, of, uh, which we don't know uh, um, what would it correspond to in the condensed matter uh, context, namely the extremal reisner nordstrom black holes. The standard way to uh, uh, do the calculation is to um, to, to compute correlation functions in these theories and then extract the low energy behavior. Here I would like to uh, argue that uh, in order to go forward, we have to change our point of view. That is, instead of uh, using the holographic construction directly, we have to view them just as a stepping stone to, um, to, to a construction of effective field theories. We have to think about what kind of effective field theories are possible. Um, holography will be one way for us to, uh, to arrive at these effective field theories. But presumably to make contact with condensed matter uh, physics, we would have to think about what kind of uh, effective field theories that appear. So in the examples that I have uh, considered, uh, the effective field theory that appears is uh, the field theory of Goldstone bosons. And the Goldstone boson here are the modes that transport, uh, transmit, uh, that transport a charge uh, and energy momentum. So I, we, I, I think uh, these features of the low energy effective theory as a the theory that contains the Goldstone bosons probably is something that we want to preserve. And then we have dynamic gauge fields and gravity. And that is something that is very similar to the construction that appears in condensed matter physics. And maybe um, this uh, is the point of contact between uh, holography and condensed matter um, theory. The infrared degrees of freedom in the example that we have uh, considered here uh, are defined holographically. 
uh, we don't need a lot of information about them in our uh, uh, in the cases that we consider because we need to we just need to know the membrane paradigm. And so I would uh, uh, conclude here by saying that uh, the uh, uh, the uh, that 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 um, uh, the effective field theory might be the uh, the missing link between holography and uh, condensed matter um, model. Thank you very much. Well, we know that the low energy effective the theory of black holes is uh, in ADS is fluid dynamics. And it's independent of whether it is Einstein gravity or Einstein gravity plus corrections. So I think this way of thinking which, uh, is consistent with that. When we reduce the theory into a theory of Goldstone bosons and the uh, infrared degrees of freedom, there is very little uh, freedom left. The Goldstone boson action is determined completely uh, only the parameters yeah. that we can change. So that would be like the uh, deviation, the, 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 the possible equation of state that we can put in or the equal possible uh, shear viscosity that we put in. We reproduce the freedom that we have in, in hydrodynamics. Uh, now, now, I think the, in the case of the black hole, this approach will not buy us anything because we know the answer. But it will... Um, possibly lead to uh, to 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 to, uh, to, uh, uh, to progress when we have a gravitational um, uh, background that describes something like, for example, uh, an extremal uh, Reisner Nordstrom black hole or or a configuration that describes a BKT phase transition. There, we don't know uh, what is the uh, how to think about the system and. Writing it down as the effective field theory will tell us what, how we should think about the system. Yeah. You, you mentioned that briefly about the uh, Galilean group. Mm -hmm. the Sorry? You, you yeah. the uh, relativistic hydrodynamics, actually. Yeah. But you also mentioned about uh, the uh, non-relativistic Galilean group. So I put uh, uh, the, the Goldstone boson between two boundaries. One is the usual boundary of ADS. The other is a boundary that is very near the horizon where the speed of light goes to zero. So the fact that its speed of light goes to zero make it uh, look similar to a non-relativistic th theory. But I could not... Non-relativistic or non-relativistic? Non-relativistic. But I could not... Um, Identify completely it with the uh, 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 non-relativistic uh, with the invariance of a non-relativistic theory. So it, I say here Galilean in court, it's it is as if I take uh, a, a, a relativistic uh, metric and then take the speed of light going to zero. Okay. No, I don't say that. I would say the following: that the degrees of freedom that near that lives near the boundary, near the horizon, does not know anything about hydrodynamics. It does not have the hydrodynamics behavior. 
it only has it only knows about one thing that is the shear viscosity and that's it it doesn't know about uh, sound wave it doesn't know about shear mode all these modes are part of the metric that is outside the horizon okay so I'm very confused uh, mm -hmm. yeah So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you solve the equation of yes. motion. So when you solve the equation of motion, you have to solve it all the way from the correct. from the boundary to the horizon. Correct. But uh, why do you say that the hydrodynamic mode does not live near the horizon? I, mean, I, I thought that the small oscillation of the horizon was the hydrodynamic mode. The small oscillation of the whole thing. <coughs> was the hydrodynamic mode the whole so the the you take this uh, bike uh, bike black hole and then you boost so you boost it with some velocity and that was the motion of the fluid uh, so the boost doesn't change the metric at the horizon sure. but it changed the metric everywhere else so in this sense the the most leaf in the bulk now I'm trying to argue here is that the part, the, 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 the horizon itself does not contain the information uh, or any information except for the value of the transport coefficient. If you were to compute the hydrodynamic mode of the transport coefficient, presumably you would need a generalization of the membrane paradigm boundary condition that knows about higher derivatives at the horizon. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think. I think no, because in the case of let's just go back to the case of the Maxwell field. In the case of Maxwell field, this membrane paradigm is basically coming from the incoming wave boundary condition. It does not know anything about uh, other thing. I think it probably comes from the higher derivative correction to the Goldstone uh, action. Probably, that's my guess. I have a question. Is energy momentum conservation recovered at every stage? The energy momentum conservation is explicit in all, at all stage because we keep the, uh, we keep the diffeomorphism invariant with respect to, uh, to this little uh, x mu. So the full theory is diffeomorphism invariant all the way uh, through. Well, I think it is completely separate uh, um, problem that they are working with. They are constructing solutions to the Einstein equation uh, that would map ha map onto a solution to the navier stokes equation. And I think in this case, their set is just a subset of what uh, Shiraz uh, constructed. Uh, it isn't what we are trying to do here that is trying to derive to 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 have a to have an intermediate step between fluid dynamic equation and the uh, einstein equation thank you